All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. As I recall, the last time we were together via TV, we were talking about a figure of speech uh, referred to as a metaphor. A very fine instrument in teaching. A metaphor is uh, the analogous expression of an idea, of course, but uh, frequently used in Scripture. Excellent teaching tool. It strikes me that we were dealing with the third verse of the first psalm. We had talked about Psalms chapter 1, and in verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he putteth his hand to, it shall prosper. Now we talked about that to some extent. An interesting thing, uh, a likeness, uh, analogy, uh, Many times we say, you know, he looks like this or he acts like that or she does this or that. It may not apply to the individual, but it is descriptive of the appearance of the action in which they are engaged. Ah, yes, and it can be used, as we said, just like the parables of the Lord. Now, a parable is a little bit different and yet falls pretty well into the same category. Uh, but when you really stop to think about the Lord's use of the parables, Isaiah made a statement concerning it, did he not? And the Lord repeated it. He used parables so that seeing they may see and not perceive. Hearing they may hear and not understand. Well now, uh, Lord, uh, do you not want your auditors to comprehend the teaching that you're... No, 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 that's not the idea. You see, many people refuse to consider spiritual matters. And the Lord taught some powerful lessons in parables. The sower went forth to sow his seed. Now we've learned, of course, Luke 8 verse 11, that the seed is the Word of God. So the sower went forth, that is, we preach, teach, set forth the Word of God. When it falls into an honest heart, that's good soil, it brings forth fruit. However, when that seed falls into an unconcerned, disinterested, non-spiritual mind or heart, people turn away in disgust. Uh, that's foolishness to them. And that's why the Lord used parables. You see, if you're really concerned, you will inquire. You'll listen to what the Lord is saying, and do you know that has meaning? And many times his disciples would say, Lord, explain unto us the parable. That's it that the inquisitive heart that desires a greater knowledge of truth. You know, Paul made this statement, and we've noticed many times in 1 Corinthians 1 at verse 18, the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. To whom is the word of the cross foolishness? Those who perish. You see, it's the only hope of eternal life that man has access to. You say then I need to study it with diligence. I need to be concerned with it. I need to make it a point to examine what the Lord has said on these various themes. But that metaphor, an interesting thing, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Uh, that is, uh, he doesn't have to worry about the drought. There's plenty of moisture. Ah, uh, bringeth forth his fruit in his season, a fruitful, uh, productive tree. His leaf does not wither, no say. He stays strong and viable, and he is ready to serve in the Lord's work, always available, alert. Yeah. And whatsoever he put his hand to, it shall prosper. Ah, yes, the Lord makes this possible for the child of God. But then when he said, he shall be like a tree, which he? Oh, we have to back up to verse 1, Psalms chapter 1. Blessed, that word means happy. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
or standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Uh, Do you notice the progressiveness of sin, the progressiveness of a negative attitude toward the Lord's will? Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, a casual meeting, walking along, or standeth in the way of sinners. The first thing you know, he's latched into that thing, and they are to, or sitteth ultimately in the seat of the scornful. When one turns a deaf ear to the teaching of God's Word, when he determines that he's going to do his own thing in his own way, he winds up being critical. He winds up sitting in the seat of the scornful. To him, spirituality is folly. It is uh, foolish. The progressiveness of sin. It's no wonder that Paul made the statement in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, be not deceived. Evil companions corrupt good morals. So don't be found walking in the way of the ungodly. You will ultimately be standing in the way of sinners. And finally, sitting in the seat of the scornful. But just a moment, we were talking about the he that is like unto a tree planted by the rivers of water. Ah, he does not walk in the way of the ungodly. Oh, no, no, no. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. Oh, just a moment. This person will be like a tree, right, solid, uh, strong, uh, not only that, but nourished, uh, he's by the rivers of water. He does not worry about the drought. Be like a tree. Oh, this fellow is one who meditates day and night upon the Word of God. You know, it's an interesting thing. People do not understand, but if you would with an open mind, uh, sincerely, read the Bible on a regular basis, friends, it will change your life. Not only will it change your life, but it will change your life to an infinitely better status. Uh, There's no question about that. You see, the conditions of this whole world change. Ah, circumstances, uh, locations, etc. Oh, but uh, human need never changes, never changes. Oh, and every need of man is supplied in the Word of God. As Paul said, every scripture inspired of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. That word, truly, thoroughly. Uh, the American standard says, completely furnished unto how many good? Every good work. Oh, but not only that. Friends, when you study and apply the principles contained in this blood-sealed covenant of the Son of God, oh, it provides happiness, joy, fullness. It is a marvelous thing that is done to the human outlook, attitude, conduct, life. It regulates the entire being and consequently anchors the soul, gives peace of mind. As a matter of fact, When Adam sinned, you remember, paradise was lost. And somebody says, boy, lost forever. It's gone, no, 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 no. Oh, sure, we can't restore a material, physical Eden. We can't do that. No, no. Oh, but we can restore paradise. There's no question about that. Yes, sir. In the home where love is the dominating principle and where mother and father devote their lives to the accomplishment of the will of God, They teach their children the love of God, the truth that makes men free. That's paradise, they say, in a spiritual sense. Oh, that gives absolute security. There's no question. That's the meaning of the Paul statement in Romans 8, verse 28. He said, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, and who are the called according to His purpose. No, not all physical things. Uh, the Christian is subject to the same debilities and problems that characterize the world generally. Uh, sickness, illness, terminal disease. Uh, it's appointed unto man once to die, Hebrews 9, 27. We understand that. Sure, but that's all material. That is uh, temporary. Oh, but we as immortal spirits, giving our lives and service to the Lord, know the joy of the knowledge of a right relationship with the Almighty and we are making preparation for eternity. Consequently, while we live here upon this earth, 
in the peace that is supplied by an understanding and application of God's Word. That's paradise. Yes, sir, there's, uh, there's no question about it. Metaphor. That's interesting. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, who bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also doth not wither. Whatsoever he putteth his hand to, it shall prosper. Now he goes on to say in the very next statement, the wicked is not so. <laughs> That's not true with the wicked. No, no. But you know, this uh, figure of speech, the metaphor, is used in various ways in Scripture. You recall the Apostle Paul's statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 at verse 10? <clears throat> he said, According to the grace of God which was given unto me, as a master builder, I laid a foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Oh, but let each man take care, be careful, how he buildeth thereon. Ah, other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. What is Paul saying here in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10? Well, he said, according to the grace of God which was given unto me, you are aware that the Lord made the promise to the apostles that when the Holy Spirit has come, he shall guide you into all truth. John chapter 16 at verse 13. Paul, inspired of the Holy Spirit, taught the truth upon which these Corinthians, who had obeyed the gospel, are building their lives. Oh, same was true with all of the apostles. They laid the foundation upon which the lives of men are to be established. And we grow more and more like Jesus Christ as we apply these principles to our thought, our speech, and our conduct. So as a wise master builder, he said, I laid the foundation. Oh, and another buildeth thereon. What is he saying? Well, through the years, this uh, matter of the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see, that's vital. Without a knowledge of truth, man, of course, is lost. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, Jesus said, John 8, verse 32. So it is important that this truth, this gospel, uh, be preached. Uh, that familiar statement in Romans chapter 10, you recall verse 12, no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, and is rich toward all who call upon Him. For whosoever, whether it's a Jew or a Greek, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, but then he added, But how shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So back to Paul's statement. What are you saying, Paul? He said, as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Now, let each man take heed how he buildeth thereon. You see? Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Well, I remember the Lord made that statement, did he not? Uh, when he was speaking to Peter, Peter had just acknowledged, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, verse 17, uh, Matthew chapter 16. Oh, Jesus then said in verse 18, Upon this rock, upon this solid foundation, upon the truth that I am indeed the Son of the Blessed, upon this rock I will build my church. On oh, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So Paul laid the foundation of eternal truth, and we are building thereon in our feeble attempts to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ, in making known the conditions upon which alienated man can be reconciled to his Maker, we are proclaiming, now be careful, let each man take heed how he buildeth thereon. I remember that Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2 at verse 5, Ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, to whom is he speaking? Uh, Christians, uh, those who walk faithfully in the footsteps of the Master, those who have yielded their lives in humble obedience to His will. As living stones, right, built up a spiritual house, uh, what is this house? 
Oh, that thou mayest know how men ought to behave themselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. First Timothy chapter 3 at verse 15. So the church is the house of God, made up of just rock or dead, inactive stones. No, 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 no. Made up of living stones. Ah, built up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Ah, oh, yes, the Christian is a priest before God. Oh, what does the priest do? Well, taking our cue from the Old Testament, we observe that the priests were the ones responsible for offering sacrifices to God. Well, as living stones build up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, what kind of offering uh, shall we make to God today? Oh, the souls of men. Yes, sir, building on this foundation is simply a matter of teaching and preaching, making known the will of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's why Paul said, let each man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Oh, there's a great deal of error uh, that is examined and condemned in Scripture, is there not? Ah, Paul said, I marvel that you are so soon removing from him who called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another gospel, only there be those who would trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. Galatians chapter 1 at verse 6. So today, men are perverting, that is, warping, uh, changing uh, the teaching of Christ, the gospel of our Lord. Oh, and it doesn't take a, a big alteration. No, no. I don't have to deviate completely. That would not deceive people. It's just slight uh, changes, uh, slight uh, deviations, and people are led away from Jesus Christ. Friends, as Paul said, I charge thee in the sight of God and of Christ Jesus, who shall be living in the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Uh, not casually, be urgent, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. But having itching ears will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. Oh, they'll turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside unto fables. Be thou faithful in all things. Suffer hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill thy ministry. Yes, the inspired apostles laid the foundation and the teaching that we do today. Thus saith the Lord, book, chapter, and verse. This is the last will and testament of the Son of God. It is to me amazing that many otherwise good people, uh, morally upright, deeply religious, will tell you that, oh, well, now this is irrelevant or non-essential, or the Lord didn't mean what he said here, or, or that is a specific statement that is to be applied in a general friend. The Lord Jesus Christ said exactly what he meant. He meant exactly what he said. And every word in this book, as we've noted many times, is a word of Christ. Oh, and you and I will stand before him to be judged on the basis of that judgment, John 12, verse 48, he said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my sayings hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So I need to order my life by a thus saith the Lord. And the remarkable thing about it is that this book says to you exactly what it says to me. And I can't add to it or delete from it, nor may I substitute for it. Every word of God is tried. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. Oh, and the last few statements in the Bible itself. Revelation chapter 22, all right, verses 18 and 19. I testify unto every man that heareth the words of these book, this book. If any man shall add thereto, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the tree of life, or from the holy city, and from the thing. Well, well wait a minute. We, we can't add to, delete from, or substitute for God's word. That's right. What did you say to Timothy, Paul? Preach the word. 
That was 2 Timothy chapter 4, you remember, beginning at verse 1. Yes, sir. And it is an urgent matter. It's not a casual thing at all. You see, your eternal destiny is contingent upon your attitude toward your obedience to the Word of God. So it is fundamentally important that I build upon the foundation of inspiration. Just the book, teaching God's Word. No, no, not my opinion. It's what the Lord has made very clear in His teaching. Uh, a metaphor, a wise master builder. Uh, and then faithful Christians are likened unto those who are building upon that foundation that Paul laid. Uh, that's an interesting thing, really. Uh, uh, metaphors, of course, are found uh, throughout the Bible. You know, I remember in John chapter 10, uh, the Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not in by the gate or the door, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Oh, but he that entereth in by the door Ah, is the shepherd of the sheep, and to him the porter openeth. He calleth his sheep by name, he leadeth them out. Oh, and when he's brought them all forth, he goes before them, and his sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, for they know not the voice of strangers. Ah, this John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1, what, what is the Lord saying here? Friend, we are the sheep of his pasture. As a matter of fact, he is the good shepherd. How could I be the sheep of his pie? Hear his voice. I have recognized him as the Lord of my life, as the supplier of my every need, as the source of my happiness and joy and security. As a matter of fact, didn't David make the statement, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, that is wonderful indeed. The Hebrew writer, you recall, said, Hebrews 13, what is it, verse 5? Uh, Be ye free from the love of money, uh, content with such things as you have. For himself hath said, I'll never fail thee, neither will I in any wise forsake thee. Uh, so with good courage we say, uh, whom shall I fear? <laughs> what shall man do unto me? Oh, the Lord is my helper. What was it, that 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. What is he saying? The Lord, if I follow him, is going to make everything physically comfortable for me. He'll make me wealthy in this world. He'll give... No, no. As a matter of fact, you may be dwelling in caves and holes of the earth, and uh, you may not be worthy in the thinking of the world. You are going to be persecuted if you walk in the footsteps of Christ. Uh, there's no question. It's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, and all who would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yeah, but that's a joy, isn't it? You know what Jesus said, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10? Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reproach you and persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. Oh, but back to John chapter 10. A stranger they will not follow, for they know not the voice of strangers. Oh, manuals and disciplines and catechism, the confession of faith, the Book of Mormon, the Koran, the ideas and opinion of a synod, a council, a conference, an association, or a convention, follower of Christ won't hear that. No, no, that is of human origin. Uh, those things are erroneous. They will lead you away from uh, Jesus Christ. These are religious institutions unknown to and unauthorized by uh, the Word of God. No, the faithful Christian does not hear the philosophies of men as a source of authority in matters religious. No, sir. To whom does he listen? The Word of God. You see, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit, both of joints and marrow, quick to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 at verse 12. Oh, it furnishes my every need. Didn't we notice that? Every scripture inspired of God. What? Profitable teaching, reproof, 
correction, instruction in righteousness, you name it, it has it. That the man of God may be complete, perfect, completely furnished unto every good work. Friends, it is vital that we stay with the thus, saith the Lord. As say, Jesus is our shepherd. Now there are many who have come and claim to be religious leaders, and some say, oh, I've found uh, golden plates and I've received a message from heaven. Falsehood. All of that is false. That simply is not the case. That will not happen. Why? The Word of God said it wouldn't happen. God said that would not occur. So we need then to listen to the Lord, not to be led astray by human philosophy or some fellow who has a particular desire in mind and he hopes to create a religious situation that will enable him to fulfill his lusts. No, no, that's uh, of no value. That will lead you astray. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No man shall snatch them out of my hand. Chapter 10, 27 and 28. The Gospel Broadcasting Network, a satellite television outreach of the Churches of Christ, brings you Preaching the Gospel with James Watkins. We would like to hear from you, our viewers. Please call us at 1-888-805-3390, email us at info at gbntv.org, or write to us at GBN, Post Office Box 23604, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37422. Free Bible study materials are available upon request. If you would like a cassette or CD of today's program, please make a note of the number you see on the screen and mention it when you call. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Alan Watkins, and now let's rejoin my dad, James. Eh, he shall be like a tree. Or the Christian is a builder and must build upon the foundation laid by the inspired apostles. That simply means that he lives and teaches, thus saith the Lord, book, chapter, and verse. And that is vital, fundamentally important. Without it, man simply cannot be saved. Human philosophy might make of you a fine person. You may be deeply religious. The Lord talks about that, doesn't he? Matthew chapter 7, 21 through 27. Many will come unto me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and thy name cast out demons, and thy name do many mighty works? Then will I profess unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So we need to give heed to a thus saith the Lord. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Oh, he said, I'll liken him unto a wise man. Friends, give it thought. Study your word, the Bible, and do it. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age.